Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast. We're talking about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny. I hope like hell the video works this time, Roblox. And you all know my co host, Justin, Tiny Rick, Bird, and Uncle, look at me, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related, and Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need. Today, we are discussing some of the random thoughts that go through our head. And we answer some frequently asked questions. What's going on, guys? Very, very, very frequently asked questions. Yeah. You'll get that later. The but. facts. The fact use. So, yeah, I'm I'm running out of nicknames for you guys. So uh, We can tell. Yeah. I'm, I'm going with <laughs> themes. I was on a big Rick and Morty oh, marathon this oh, week. Can't wait for the new season coming. I'm out. on, like, my fifth run through of the ones that are on Hulu. No. Oh. They yeah. re-upped for, like, 100 and some odd episodes. Oh, God. Hurry up. <laughs> That's all I can say. Right. So, some huge news, and I'm very huge. tired, so it's not coming out as enthusiastic as I was hoping. But Between Two Worlds podcast is officially a 501c3 nonprofit organization. <laughs> that was only the biggest pain in my ass to get done, but we happened, did it. It happened quickly too. Didn't you just brag about how easy it was? Yeah. Well, it was still a pain in the ass. How oh. like filled out this form and like it was all online and had like click buttons yeah Yeah. just it was a problem he couldn't throw money at yeah it it was (laughs) (laughs) we're coming out swinging this episode (laughs) so all the money we collect from patreon from donations etc can now be written off as a tax deduction for charitable giving so if you want to help a good cause head over to between two wheels.com the two is spelled out t-w-o and click on project clean slate link today do it with this awesome news we have partnered up with Advent Black to help raise money for Project Clean Slate. For everyone who donates $20 to Project Clean Slate, you will be entered into a drawing to receive a set of Advent Black color matched to your Harley stretched saddlebags. Now we are limiting this to only 500 entries and if you want your name entered more than once, Donate an additional $20 for every entry you would like. And remember, if you don't win, you can rest assured that the money is going to a great cause and it is a tax write-off. Hell yeah. What are the, what are the uh, retail? What's the retail on those? Um, a lot. You, you, yeah, didn't, it, you didn't look it up, did you? Well, I did. It depends <laughs> okay. on, oh, on the paint. On the paint. Yeah. yeah okay. So obviously vivid black or unpainted. And that's for any color, right? CVO, you know, any um, co- color so that they actually have a list yeah. of all the colors that they have that they can do for custom. Yeah. It's if like they, 98% of them. Yeah. If mm-hmm. they don't have your color, you can get it in primer and have it color matched to, if you have a custom, like color. a custom paint. Yeah. Um, but, but Hey, they're, I mean, I got their parts. You got their parts. Justin you, has their, you parts. Got their parts. Yeah. I've got all, a couple of their parts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Hosto's got their parts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, huge fans. So they, they match. I mean, Perfect. Flawless paint on the ones that I got. Y'all just stepped over my next uh, thing I was about that, to. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, hey, if you, you want to point it out, they would have never known. So that's on you, bud. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have the tour pack and the lower fairings. You have the lower fairings. Lowers, yep. You have a bunch of brackets and other cool. I stuff. had everything because I yeah. bought the geezer glide. So I I just got their um, black latches. Yeah. Yeah. And then the two of us have their drop in liner for the yes. tour pack, which is phenomenal so, so dope i get so many compliments on that all of their products that we have had and if y'all recall justin trashed the rear end of my street glide yep. oh did he and I bet, we, I bet we have a link to a video for that <laughs> <laughs> uh, and when he did i went with admin black because i had that side side exhaust and they have it to where there's no no, no cutouts. cutouts yeah so i did the the saddlebags and their rear fender extension so it all made it look super clean of course i fucked it up that weekend i got it back. <laughs> dude like yeah. 12 hours after yeah. <laughs> I still you were backing up to a curb on sixth street in austin and you hear, oh, that's and right hear, that's when it son was, of yeah. a bitch yeah i was like yeah that, that just happened there it is yeah. It's yours now. Did you just forget that it was low? Like it yeah. was lower, or was it a high? It was well, a pretty. It high was curb. a high curb. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it was definitely a higher curb. But yeah, I, I definitely remember that. <laughs> yeah, it was daring rot. Yeah, it was I mean, if rally. you if you look at my my tri bar light, 
right at the very bottom there's a about, a, scrape. about a one inch scrape where I've backed into curves. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's why I hate backing in. Yeah. I'd rather just but pull in. going back to the main point, I remember I was here when you unboxed your lowers. Yeah. And I had just taken my lowers off of the, uh, the Ultra. And seriously, they are one for one spot on with OEM. Yeah. Not to mention the paint matching was perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, side by side, I could literally I could not tell them apart for a million dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, my, mine are the vivid black, and you know, yeah. black black shows any flaws. Yeah. Yeah. And th- they're they're perfect. And I've I've washed it. Uh, I've clay barred them. None of the had no problems with paint. Yeah. I mean, they stand behind their product, and I really I really like I really like it. I'm actually looking at getting their new uh, CVO rear fender for my oh. bike. They got those new, uh, the chin spoilers. Yeah, not for my bike. Though. Not for up to 17? I yeah, can't remember. I don't remember. I thought about getting one. I'm I, surprised you just don't go buy a CVO. You're you're way overdue. You really <laughs> are. You know, I've been thinking about it. God, <laughs> I, I knew, knew it. it. <laughs> I was going to send you because that CVO you were looking at sold like the day after you were telling us about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, we just got to wait for the new colors. Yeah, I want to see year. what the new yeah. colors look like. So you might get that 2020 CVO. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> so anyways, we are huge <laughs> fans of Advent Black. And I had the opportunity to actually speak with their CEO. He wanted to help. He loves the podcast. And he loves the concept of Project Clean Slate. So he's like, hey, how can I help you guys out? I was like, can you give us a bike that we can start building on? He's like, well, no, <laughs> um, but I can give you guys, I can donate some saddlebags. And I was like, well, that'd be cool. We, we do have a lot of bagger riders who yeah. may not have the stretched bags who want them. And these, these aren't just for like the, the Rushmore series. They go back to the oh, right. old school series as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so if you would like to see what they have, uh, I'll have a link in the show notes to their website directly to their stretch saddlebags and you can see the color options they have and you can see what twenty dollars is actually going to get you yeah oh yeah so i think the most expensive just the bags yeah, yeah. color match was like 800 bucks yeah. yeah which is still about way half cheaper the than price OEM, yeah. <laughs> of harley and i'm telling you guys the quality is as good if not better it's spot on than yeah. the harley davidson bags so anyways Huge news, great opportunity for Project Clean Slate to start fundraising, as well as giving our listeners an opportunity to get some really awesome saddlebags for their touring bike. Yeah, because you guys have been killing it lately, so keep telling your friends. Yeah. Possibly family, if you're cool with them. Yeah. Stop people on the street. Yeah, tell a stranger. Yeah, I, I do that a lot. That's that's your goal for this week, is to stop a stranger and tell them about our podcast, and I will give you a high five if I see you. That's that's nice of you, man. Bro, that's worth more than saddlebags, in my opinion. Well, you gonna like want, <laughs> you're gonna like want change? Uh, opinions are like assholes, right? <laughs> um, so let's let's go. Let's start off with some of our random thoughts here. Yeah. Uh, motorcycle ergonomics. This is actually suiting because I don't know if I told you guys, but I have officially been diagnosed with carpal tunnel. No oh, shit. I mean, yeah, I think we need to play Sarah McLaughlin. In the arms of you do this a lot. No, that's from masturbating so much. Yeah, I do. Tennis elbow. I do jack it a lot, but no, it's it was ever since the Arkansas ride with that that uh, that defective your ba- your throttle. Bad throttle. Yep. Ever since then, my hands have just been killing me. So, so I, mean, I can sue Harley. I was gonna say you can yeah. sue Harley. Yeah. Good luck. I have I have video evidence of it, so maybe <laughs> yeah. I have a case. Well, and you know you have to take it to a dealership to get it fixed. Yeah. So I, I should go to and be like, "It's a fucking shoe." And Thomas I'm, J. Henry, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna lawyer <laughs> up and or Jim Adler. <laughs> Jim, Jim Adler. He's the, the Texas oh, Hammer. The Texas Jim Hammer. Adler is my dude, man. <laughs> his his commercials come on TV. I get fucking pumped. Dude, his son. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hate his son. Fuck no. him. <laughs> <laughs> but like if I was in the NFL, I wouldn't listen to hip hop or rock. I would listen to nothing but Jim Adler on repeat. Look at his his ads, <laughs> bro. Just yeah. just his ads on repeat. If y'all don't know who Jim Adler is, look him up. Jim Adler, the Texas Hammer. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. I I love his videos, <laughs> his his video commercials, because it looks like it's today. But the graphics they use, oh, oh yeah, like the special effects are totally 1980s. Yeah, for oh sure. yeah, <laughs> he's standing on top of a semi truck, and oh god, it's <laughs> yeah. I'm getting hard thinking about it. Got yeah. a, he's got his hammer. 
So, yeah. all right. So <laughs> back to motorcycle ergonomics. Oh, I mean, fuck. we still were talking about motorcycle ergonomics. ergonomics. Um, with everyone being different sizes, shapes, having different riding positions, uh, I wish there was a way for me to get a feel for how I would fit on a bike without having to go throw my leg over 40 different bikes. However, See, I another problem I mean, he can't throw money at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, I wouldn't mind having access to every bike I would ever want to ride to try them out. I mean, so, it's 2019. You kind of do. I mean. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, I wanna, he needs to put an ad on Craigslist. Looking for man, 6'3", same weight with this inseam. I want you, I'm going to pay you $1,000. <laughs> To go throw your leg. You can throw money at this problem. I see. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of fucktards. <laughs> the other side of this, too, is we could go to the website cycleergo.com or cycle-ergo.com. Yeah. And you're able to visually see how you will sit on many different bikes, and you can custom tailor some of the parameters, uh, such as handlebar rise and pullback, uh, pegs, and different stuff like that. Uh, and see how a passenger would look on the bike. So yeah, I didn't, some play, I didn't play with levels. that part really. Um, I did. It was pretty spot on. So let's let's talk about Cycle Ergo now. This is an older website. I remember seeing this when I was looking at, you know, how how will my ape hangers fit on my soft tail? So it's, it's oh wow, it's an older it's super website. fucking old. Yeah, I mean, you were in kindergarten, probably. Yeah, it's just a few years. Ninety eight. Yeah. No, not that long. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 2000. 2002. Uh, anyways, my only issue with the website is the shortage of the more recent motorcycle models. I understand that bikes don't drastically change when it comes to the rider triangle or the sitting seated position, but manufacturers do alter some of the rider triangle as they mature a bike model. Yeah. So... I didn't see any of the Rushmore series touring no. bikes on there. Nope. I think 13. 13 was. was they had oldest. a 13 Rogue Light Ultra on there. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's that's my issue with the site is the, and again, I don't know how much of a change there was in the rider triangle on the Harleys from 13 to today, but... I, I know there's been changes to the frame. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, that was, yeah, the frame that was, was a big eight one. years ago. Well, yeah. You know. Well, the Rushmore is a different frame. Yeah. And I think in 17, they also made some alterations to the frame. But, again, does that change your rider triangle? I mean, you it doesn't may, have to. It may not have at all. <clears throat> yeah. The other side of it, too, is the assumed seat height. So yeah. you can't change the seat height. Now, you and I both ride tall boy seats. Mm -hmm. So it actually drops us down and back. So that's going to change yep. our triangle as well. I thought you could adjust the seat, at least up and down. I don't think there was forward and backward, but I'm pretty uh, sure there was a I seating didn't, adjustment. I didn't, I didn't see, see that. that. I know you can adjust the hand, handlebar rise, pull back. And I think pegs. pegs. I mean. And then your height. Roblox came and set up a phone interview, so I mean, I'm not going to trust anything he says about technology. It's fucking Apple products. Yeah, blow me, <laughs> Uncle Ken. What's your Don't thoughts about the website? Time. So, I mean, it's cool. I, I mean, I'd never seen the site before, uh, but to back back to what you said, it doesn't have a lot of the new bikes. I did see like it had they had the new Sportsters on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've never really, I mean, I've only ridden one Sportster, and that was yours. Uh, it didn't, it seemed like the parameters were a little off. Cause I mean, I realize I'm tall, I'm six, four, but when I put my parameters in there for a road glide, it seemed like I was like sitting, like my head was like a foot above my windscreen. I, I, yeah, I don't, then, I don't know how accurate the windscreen is on that. And plus it, you have a different you have a different winter you have the memphis shades on yeah. your bike it's a, yeah the 10 inch and a different seat yeah it just seemed like the dimensions were of the person were like really tall yeah for a six four because i changed it did you change the inseam to 36 yes did huh. that too weird so for me it felt it felt pretty close and then with tracy i had her 
uh, parameters for a passenger, and it was pretty spot on. Yeah. Um, the Road King was actually almost spot on. Yeah. Okay. See, it's cool. I mean, it's it's definitely cool that you can sit there and look at all the different bikes. Yeah. And roughly get a rough idea of the rider's yeah. triangle. But there's so much more that goes into the rider's triangle and your ergonomics mm-hmm. than, you know, the rise of the handlebars and the pullback. I mean, like I said, different seats. And, you know, if you change mid controls, I mean, because, you know, you've yeah. got, you've got what, on the, the chubby shuttle, you've got oh, fucking forward reach. Rid- and- Forward, mid, uh, half niners. Mid, mid fours. They're closer to forwards than they are to mids. Yeah. So but I they mean, don't call them forwards. So when you, change, when you change to mids. It's going to be a big difference. It's, it changes everything. Yeah. And that's not going to be something they're going to be able to represent yeah. on their website. Yeah. But that's also a drastic change. Yeah. Compared to stock. Now, given, these are for stock dimensions of the bikes. Yeah, and the assumed seat height based on, we assume what the manufacturer says the seat height is yeah now yeah. you put me on a stock stock road glide and i sit down that seat height's dropping oh yeah because i'm putting 275 pounds on top of that bike yeah so that's going to alter it plus you yeah, know but if the seat drops everything else drops too it yeah. doesn't change the rider triangle true that is true so i mean it's cool like i said <laughs> <laughs> It gives you a rough idea, but it, people just, they should know, hopefully they do know, that there's so much that you can alter beyond yeah. what they have yeah. Don't take it program. to Don't take it as gospel. Yeah. Use it as a guide. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, like all of us put different handlebars on our bikes. The rise You and more the, than others. <laughs> the rise and the pullback actually don't mean shit when you look at the bars because you may not mount them the way that this website is yeah i couldn't tell you well, what the is actual assuming. pullback on my bars are unless they're tree mounted then it does right true uh, yeah yeah i know but like on my ape hangers they're a six inch pullback but the way i have them mounted because they sit on top of the tree on that clamp i may have them pulled back An at a different inch. angle or i may have them pushed forward a different angle that doesn't change the pullback of the bars though no because but the pullback is measured measured from the grips to the mounting position so yes you can push them further away but that bar still has six inches of pullback correct but I not know. when it comes to the rider, rider triangle that's uh, going to be altered which it, is what i'm talking about yeah you're correct but it does mean something yeah the, yes yes the bars are set but how you position them changes yeah. everything yeah absolutely so there's the, the, some of the nuances there uh justin what are your thoughts about the website so I, I do share kind of the same gripes of not any more recent models uh but i do have to disagree with it being inaccurate because with my experience with test riding a bunch of the bikes I tried it out on, on quite a few, and most of them were pretty freaking spot on. I, I do agree that the Ultra or the Rogue Glide looked a little off, but looking at pictures of me on the bike, of, on the Rogue Glide, it's, it's not by much. It's going to look weird looking at it from the side profile. And maybe because that's it. It is, because you have to remember the top of your head is, you know, four to six inches above your eye line. So even if you're looking over the, the windshield, remember, you're still sticking up a little bit further. Um, but at the end of the day, this is a uh, pretty small site. It's a free site with yeah. zero advertising, so that whoever's making this is making zero money off of this. Right. So I mean, we can't we can't shit on it too much. And I think that anybody going to this site, anybody who's delved deep enough into this research, as far as the rider triangle, is going to understand that it's not to be taken as gospel, yeah. and that there are you know more changes you can do. So. I think it's a cool site. It's it's a good spot to get a baseline on. Yeah. I think it's easy for someone to go in there and type in and be like, oh, wow, well, I, mean, I don't fit on a Sportster. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm 6'4". Yeah. You know, obviously, it doesn't take your weight into account, but, yeah. I mean, at 6'4", Sportsters are really yes. cramped and tiny. I mean, And, I mean, they had other bikes other than Harleys, too. So, I mean, oh, if yeah. someone's oh, yeah. trying to debate between a sport bike and Harley, it might sway them one way or the other. They might look at it from the side and be like, wow, sport bikes look uncomfortable as shit. Like... Cause it, I mean, you're gonna hopefully you're gonna be smart enough to see that pressure point on the wrist, but yeah. who knows? Yeah. So, any other random thoughts before we go into our frequently asked questions? So, this is not in our show notes, folks. So, this is literally random thoughts. 
I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So did you know that if you uh, scaled the Earth down to the size of a cue ball, that it would have the same texture to your finger? That's how flat the world is in comparison. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sorry, smooth the world is in comparison. So many people Fuck, were just triggered just clipped. then. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. And that's due to uh, the gravitational pull of the, the world. That's, that determines on how high mountains can grow. Mount Everest is actually pretty close to the highest a mountain can ever po- physically grow on Earth. Grow? Grow. Mountains grow. Do they grow? What else would, they, what other word would you use? Formed. Okay, I'll use form. I feel like grows. You know, it cannot like, form any higher because at that point, the gravity of all of the other rocks above it would crush the, the base layers. But what if they were like really strong rocks? Not possible. Like Gravi- like Gravity is a whole like lot stronger. Yeah, like dim- diamond like space rocks. rocks. Y'all are fucking stupid. <laughs> all right, so let's go into our <laughs> Facebook. Random yeah, well, that's definitely random. Um, our Facebook frequently asked questions. So, Justin, I'm going to have you kick this one off. Oh, boy. We all know how fun those Facebook groups are. <laughs> so, the first one up on our list is, what tires should I buy? What oh. tires should I buy? <laughs> all right, Justin, what's your I'm going to split take? the fucking internet right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shinko 777. <laughs> the most controversial tire on the internet. But I have a caveat. If the bike is under eh, 700 pounds. I think it should go with the Shinko 777. I have seen enough to know that on the heavier touring bikes, they don't do so well. But I've had Shinkos on my Dyna. I've had Shinkos on my Sportster. I'm going to be putting Shinkos on my Fat Bob. If you keep them inflated, which you should be checking you definitely should. all the yes. time, those things grip like shit. I mean, shit as in good. They, they grip awesome. Like a motherfucker? Like a motherfucker. Like a motherfucker. And, I mean, I got shh, over 5,000 miles on that rear Dyna, and I rode that thing pretty hard, too, and it was it still had plenty of life left. So, the Sportster, not so much. It's a fucking Sportster, but... So, you think that the 777s don't do that well on the Touring because of the weight? That's the only thing I can think of. Either that or when they get to the bigger sizes, when they get... I mean, I, no, because the, the rear the Dyna was a... Was, was it 180 on the rear of the Dyna, or was it 150? Don't know. I think it might have been. A, it's the same as size of the Sportster, so it should be at 150. Yeah, yeah, because it's 130, 150. Yeah, so I think if you go any bigger than a 150, which damn, my fat pal is bigger than 150. Doesn't have to be. Ugh, right. No, no <laughs> if anything, I'm going to 190. But <laughs> yeah, it it might be the the weight of the bike might be a factor. It might be the fact that it's a a wider tire. Um, that's going to change the everything you know physics wise. Or it could be they're they're made to use all the tread. It could be. All right. So the sidewall. The sidewalls, yeah. yeah. All right. Ken, what are your thoughts on what tire should I buy? Well, if if you don't if you don't know shit about tires, mm-hmm. then you should probably just go to the dealership and say, Hey, I need new tires. Yeah. And let them do it. Yeah. Because the dealership or the, the the motor company picked those tires for a reason, no matter what model you're looking at. Yeah. And I mean, and like Harley's, they they they're good years. So yeah. I mean, or well Michelin's, you know, whatever they Mine's use. Mine's Dunlop. Dunlop. There, it could be it. Yeah, but I mean, they're going to be a common, a brand. well-known brand, well-known yeah. brand. Uh, yeah. Really, you need to do your own damn research. Yeah, because everyone's going to have different riding needs. Yeah, because you know, it depends on what bike you're riding. How you're riding? Where in the country you're yeah. riding? Does it does it get really cold there? Does it get really That's hot true. there? What kind you of know? textures the road? And you, do you get a lot of rain you, and yeah, so forth rain. and so on? Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's just it's another one of those questions. Like, well, I, I I don't know where do you live? How, how do you ride? Yeah. yeah, You're an adult. Use the fucking internet. God, God, God bless. www.google.com <laughs> is your friend. Not don't sp- go to fucking Facebook and type into a group. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Or no, HD no, no. forums. Yeah, you need, or to go to, HD forums. you need to go to HD forums and ask them what tires I should put on my bike, and they will tell you. Also, <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows this, but you can go to a Facebook group, and in the top right, I mean, now this could change. In the top right, there's a little search bar. You can type in what you're looking for, and you're going to see everyone's posts before that. That's kind of like on oh, Reddit, really? too. Yeah, Reddit, you can do that. I mean, I knew they do it on the Reddit, but I didn't know it on Facebook. Oh, are you being serious? I'm being serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, but so if you want to see, you know, everyone else's experience with the Shinkos, you can go into a Facebook group and type, type in Shinko. Shinko. Yeah, Shinko, Shinko 777. Just go to a Dyna 
group. Yeah, hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't. You can also, I mean, groups. going back to, to your point, uh, how it's going to vary. I'm obviously not going to put the same tires on my Ultra as I am on my Softail. It makes no fucking sense. They're used for completely different purposes. So yeah, exactly. Or I mean, you can even go by based off the type of bike you, you have because you can have a road glide and use it strictly for touring, or you can be like fucking sea bear stunts and be popping wheelies and drifts all the time. Yeah, yeah. obviously he's not putting touring tires on that bike. No. Not at all. So be an adult, do your research. Yeah, and that's if gonna be my answer for every fucking one of these <laughs> questions. <laughs> and it really kind of is. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> so my response to this is the factory tires, but. Well, you're boring, so. Well, that's what I put on mine when I got new so ones. So, on hey, my, you know, I think it's the Dunlop D402 or some shit like that. Those things, I got eighteen thousand miles. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, but I got nearly uh, twenty out of mine. But with that, also had nitrogen in them. Oh uh, yeah. And that that it doesn't matter what tire you get, use nitrogen. It works so much better. You don't have the pressure fluctuations like you do with CO2. And I've found that it lasts longer. What? Did you say CO2? Yeah, Did he I? said CO2. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> that stands for compressed. Oh, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. Gosh. I tried to save him, but. <laughs> no. Compressed uh, oxygen. <laughs> CO2. Oxygen. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. We, we know what CO2 is. We're trying <laughs> we're, to save yeah, your ass. Normal air. No, <laughs> it's I'm, not working. Look, I'm normal tired. Air. I am tired, frustrated. Yeah, if, if I, I, I'm cool with the nitrogen, but I mean they still do have some fluctuation. They do. I mean, they so, do, but it's not as drastic. Yeah, but I mean, at that point, you can't fix it yourself. True. Where were you getting nitrogen at? The Harley shops. Really? They do that? Mm-hmm. I, I know. know that. I know Cowboys and Caliente does it, unless you have to specifically ask. I be- well, correct. Like up in Dallas at the uh, the shop in Allen, Texas. Yeah. They did it on pretty much all their bikes. Now, they did charge you for it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like 12 bucks. Yeah. Per tire. Yeah. yeah. But, again. So, you rode your bike to Dallas a lot just to get air in the tires? This is when I lived up there. <laughs> so, what you're saying is all the time you live down here, you haven't been using nitrogen? I don't think so. Yeah. Damn. I Damn. haven't had a bike long enough to worry about <laughs> yeah, it. He hasn't had a bike for a full season for that to fluctuate. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's 60 degrees. New bike. All right. So... <laughs> What oil is best? Oh, God. Okay. Oh, so so the oil you want to use in your bike is uh, you're going to want to use Mobile One. You're going to want to use AMS Oil, uh, Royal Purple, Havilland Motor Oil, Valvoline. Uh, Quaker State. Quaker State. There yeah. you go. Uh, Pins Oil. Did I, so did I all say of that them? One? Quaker Oats. Quaker Oats, yeah. Yeah. All the oils. All the oils. Because it doesn't really it doesn't fucking, fucking matter. matter. As long as you're using motorcycle oil. Yeah. And you're putting them in the right spots. It doesn't fucking matter. No. So. I will say this. I will say this. Full synthetic is the best. For obvious reasons, the science is yep. there to back it up. Yes. I will say Mobile One, which is a synthetic, is my favorite. Simply because <laughs> I had a mechanic show me the difference. And he just put a little bit of like 10 different oils. Uh, and his biggest thing was Mobile One's cheaper than Sin 3 from Harley. And it's it's thicker. And his his point of view, and I'm not saying it's accurate or not, but it made sense to my dumbass. So that's what mattered. But <laughs> thicker oil does a better job than really thin oil. That that is the theory. <laughs> that, that, okay. so, so let's put this <laughs> out it? there. There is a lot of <laughs> testing that goes on. Yeah. With motor oil, <laughs> and just because something is thicker doesn't mean it's better. Doesn't mean it's better. Uh, okay. See people because, out there with fucking corn syrup. <laughs> because if you live in places where it gets really cold, yeah, yeah, it's not gonna be good. That, that's a terrible idea to have super thick motor yeah. oil in your bike. There's actually a car. test facility here in San Antonio that does nothing but oil testing. I hmm. almost worked there. The only job was to put mo- mo- uh, motor oil into a motor run it to failure, take it apart, see what went wrong, and then put the motor back together. I almost took that job. Sounds fun. It does sound fun. And that's I mean, when I was unemployed, but it was on the other side of town. It was only like $11 an hour. So, But, I mean, you get to break shit all day. <laughs> that sounds yeah, awesome. It does. But, you know. But, yeah, I mean. I like money. <laughs> motor oil. 
you're going to need to pick your motor oil based on where you're at in the yeah. country, the, the climate you're in, obviously the bike that you're riding and how you ride. And what you can afford. And yeah, That's and obviously true. what you can afford. I mean, you know, AMS oil and Royal Purple, they're going to cost quite a bit. They're yeah. probably one Royal of the Purple's expensive. Two, top two most expensive oils out there. I've I've never been a fan of Royal Purple on a motorcycle, but I do love it in in I've used it in all my cars. cars. Yeah. yeah. I've used it in all my cars. And it made a, my Rondo, it made all the difference. I went from just regular, you know, like Penn's oil synthetic to Royal Purple. Just on a fucking whim. I had the extra money and I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. It's an old car. Everything got so quiet under the engine. Hmm. Like wow. it, it did make a difference. Sure. Um uh, so yeah, I mean put whatever manufacturer recommends in your bike. And then find your price point from there. Sure. Yeah. Yep. And Justin. I mean, mine's the same. I, I run mobile, mobile One in my car. I run it in all my V8 muscle cars. Uh, or sorry, pony cars. That's apparently a fucking thing. Um, but, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm on one today. My little pony. <laughs> my little pony. But, uh, I mean, for, for bikes... I just do whatever the dealer puts in it because, I mean, they pick that motor oil for a reason. So kind of the same thing as the tires. I mean, they're not going to put an oil in there that they know is going to make their bike run shitty. I mean, yeah, that, yeah, they're not going to do something to bomb the engine. No. Yeah. So. Plus, I don't change my own oil because I'm fucking prissy. Okay. <laughs> I'm so. definitely not prissy. I don't want to <laughs> deal with the fucking oil. I know, but that's what the internet's going to say. So yeah, I'm well. beating them to it. You also don't uh, know how to fucking build a bike, so. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is the last question before we go into the ad break. So what is the best starter bike? <laughs> Justin? Oh, boy. I, I want to start this just choke on. people when I hear this question. <laughs> All right. So if we're going by the generic definition, the, you know, lightweight, low power, affordable, I'm still going to be sticking with the Ninja 300. Even though Miss Bird did not have a good uh, experience with it, that's because she's short as fuck, and that's really the only reason why she had a bad experience. But um, it's literally a dirt bike with a fairing. It rides so it, it feels so similar to a dirt bike as far as weight and handling. Um, I mean, really a good bike to get started on, and that extra fifty cc's makes it able to be going on the highway. But as I'm sure you guys are going to say, any bike can be a starter bike. Yes. Boom. Dropping the knowledge bombs. All right. Ken? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any bike can be a fucking starter bike. Mm -hmm. It does, all, all motorcycles operate the same way, pretty much. Can, I mean, we, can we say this, though? Because, I mean, we're all on the same page. But let's at least put a caveat saying that size does play a little factor into it. Because I can see a little five two. I mean, we've even seen the the video of the short person, a little whatever the fuck they want to be called, midget. Uh, yeah, dwarfs riding the full size crotch rocket. But the dude fucking hops off and holds in the clutch at stoplights and shit like that. That's going to be a little bit harder to do than say, for example, if he had a smaller bike that he could put his feet down and things like that. So if you were a little bit more skilled or a little bigger it's going to be easy. You're going to have a wider range. Well, I mean, is that fair? Yeah. I, no, no. So I, I agree a hundred percent putting me on a Ninja 300 doesn't make doesn't sense. Make sense. Well, it's not going to be comfortable. Right. Putting me on a road King, a fat boy, a Dyna a sportster and a sportster is going to be pushing it, but yeah. a Dyna fat, you know, a soft tail or a road King would still be a good starter bike for someone my size correct well, but obviously you still need to be able to operate correct safely op safely operate the motorcycle mm -hmm. but for me it, if you can get on the motorcycle and you can lift it up and you have the ability to operate that motorcycle responsibly at, as it is designed to be operated yeah. the only thing left is your responsibility your maturity level mm -hmm. i mean and really that, that that's my take on it all you know, plays a huge factor. It, that, that's the biggest thing. I don't care if, I mean, if you've got the money to go drop a freaking on a ZX-14 right off the bat, that's great. Good for you. Can you safely operate it as it is designed and not fucking be an idiot with it? <laughs> drop the clutch when you have it up to like 5,000 RPMs and just, you know, put the front wheel up in the air? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> 
so that's my thing. So like people are always like, oh well, you know, nobody needs a, a thousand cc bike because their first motorcycle. Why not? Well, why not? You don't know that person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my first motorcycle was a seven hundred and fifty cc crotch rocket. Yep, yeah, mine too. My first street bike was a six hundred, but yeah. so I mean, and those go fast as fuck. Fast still. as fuck. Yeah. Even I mean, the six hundreds are fucking fast. I mean, I had that 750. The fastest I ever got it to was 130. Hit 140 something on the 600. Oh, and it wanted more. And oh, it, for it, sure. Yeah, it had plenty more. To I give. did. I didn't have exactly. more. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. So, so yeah. Any any bike can be a starter bike. I don't care what size motor it is, as long as you can actually get on it to operate it. The rest is your maturity and responsibility level. Yeah. Agreed. So for me, I just put the bike that fits you well, that you can afford, and that you can grow into. And I did throw a model out here, kind of like what Justin did, the FTR 1200. To yeah. To your point that you mm-hmm. mentioned in your video, when we were test riding them, it's a great starter bike. It's a little tall. It's it is. A tad bit it's, tall, it is but, tall, but if you can stand, if you can stand that bike up, great starter but, bike. But they do say, I think, didn't they say that they have shaved seats for it oh, already? Sure, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's a you know really big aftermarket already for the yep. FTR. You know, and you can lower it a little bit. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be drop linkages very soon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, but you, to that point, I also said a Road King, a Fat Boy. Now, here's the thing: I specifically call these bikes out because they are not necessarily forgiving, and I, I think I mean, that's important. I don't want a bike that the friction zone is massive and you can just burn out through a clutch and you don't have to actually learn how to operate it correctly. That's true. I mean, that goes back to operating it like it's supposed to be. Right. But some bikes are, uh, you know, sport bikes are a lot more forgiving than a lot of the cruisers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, so as far as fundamentals go. Yes. Yeah. So I think getting a, super easy bike to ride doesn't make sense now again i'm i'm taking this off of 18 years 19 years experience of riding and i start off on a crotch rocket yeah but over time i've i've personally found that for me the better starting bike or starter bike would have been a heavier harley davidson or like a Honda Shadow, a bigger motored Honda Shadow, something that I could have grown into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also want to put put one more stamp on this because mm-hmm. if you're not in a in a hurry to get on the streets or maybe if you're a younger person, you know, early teenage years and you you can't ride on the street. Dirt bike. Dirt bikes are so fucking good to learn to ride on. That's actually the reason why uh, my wife is going to be getting a dirt bike because she said she was able to, you know, learn the fundamentals. I mean, she can ride around a parking lot all day long, but she was not able to get the, you know, not parking lot experience because as soon as she got on the road, she was so worried about what was going on around her. But with a dirt bike, she's going to be able to, you know, go and explore wherever we're riding on a ranch or whatever and get more of that, you know, out of second gear. There's experience. no traffic. There's no traffic. There's nothing to... Yeah, just ma- inanimate objects. Maybe yeah. other, you know, dirt bikers that, you know, yeah, but if sure. you run into them. Yeah, but, I mean, if if you're not, like I said, if you're not in a rush to get on the street and you have property or somewhere to ride, dirt bikes are just one of the best riding tools that you can use. Except for me. Why? My, I told you. Well, yeah, that ties back into the maturity. <laughs> There was a lack of physical control yeah, of the bike. That's true. <laughs> I was not big enough to f- correctly operate that motorcycle. Yeah, you shouldn't. You should have been on a two fifty. I mean, I was great either. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't even able to. I mean, I had to do hop the, onto hop, it on the one foot side stand, yep. you know, type thing when I had it. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go into a break here from Nutsack, and when we return, let's talk about handlebars. Oh, your your subject. You're going to be our subject matter expert right now. Great. <laughs> Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying around extra mags for our concealed carry 
to earbuds, sunglasses, vape stuff, and business cards. It is great having less shit in our pockets, and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down. If you buy using our link, Nutsack will give you $5 off to enjoy a beer. Head over to nutsack.com slash B2W. That's N-U-T-S-A-C dot com slash B the number two W to get yours today. And we are back. So what size bars can I go with? Without changing wires, cables, or hoses. You're not allowed to elaborate on your answer at all. You just have to say what's on the notes. Fair enough. <laughs> Uncle Ken. 20 inches. All right. <laughs> okay, Justin. Th- this is literally the stupidest question on the internet. Yeah, I know. I mean, it is just so fucking retarded because it's going to vary for every single bike, every single bar. Because there's so many variations or so many factors going into this. You have to look at pullback, rise, grip separation. Uh, if width. the bars do, yeah, the width. Uh, if the bars do any weird like come up and then come down bullshit. Every single thing is going to be adding or subtracting link to the hoses. Buy the bars, put the damn bars on your bike, and then measure how much you need. D- d- okay. Just that, don't, that, yeah. just be fucking patient with it. Yeah. It's weird what happens when you start doing research. You, you know. may you may alter what type of bars you go with based on the extra five hundred dollars worth of hoses cables and, cables and hoses and, and, and all that stuff. And if you if you're not installing them yourself, well, there, there's yeah. another yep. seven hundred dollars of labor tacked that's onto like that. Fucking seventeen hundred dollars to put bars on, like that's stupid. I'm in the I wrong can't business. People do I'm going to get into the putting on bars business, dude. That's honestly, that's I've tossed I'll, that idea I'll around. Charge half of We've, what the dealership charges. You bring the parts. You bring all seriously. your parts, and I'll do it. I've literally considered doing that in my garage. It's kind of like a side hustle. Mm-hmm. Bars, exhaust, stage one stuff. Bars, exhaust, intake, just and super just fucking bolt-on accessories. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Literally, bring me an invoice of the dealer. I'll charge you half. That's what, what you're good at. Yeah, molding stuff on. Oh, shit, bolt stuff on. Series expert over here. Yeah, like season four. Hit it up on YouTube. So <laughs> I actually did a little bit of helping with this. Yeah, you're um, fucking stupid. It really depends on the bike. I quit. But for 2014 and newer Harley touring bikes, you can go to most 13 inch ape hangers without ch- having to change wires and hoses. However. Bars have different widths, pullback, etc. So the best way is to either speak to the manufacturer or find some that you like on a forum and see what they had to do to install them. As in, do the research yourself. Don't post it up in a question. Yeah. That little Um, search bar is going to be great. And I did caveat this because I've, I've had too many shops try to screw me. Most of the times, a shop will say you have to change your lines and wiring because it's easier for them not to reroute factory hoses and cables to make something work. Yeah. So with like the 13-inch bars that we have on our road glide, you have to alter the routing of your wires and your your brake line. Yeah, I had to unclip. Yeah, and to unclip undo some wires un- and yeah, a couple zip yeah. ties. Yeah, that's that's and all that, you have to do. And that was it. Yep. But but if I didn't want to, yeah, and the, I needed, I think it was all of like maybe an inch or two. Yeah. Do you think that has to do with them just being lazy and, you know, I think they're, they're responsible to get the bike back as close to stock as possible because that is what they're insured for. That's exactly what I was going to bring up is it's a liability for sure. Yeah. If they, if they, you know, found out this person was an accident, they saw that that clip was undone. Like, Oh shit, that might've caused it. And yeah, Yeah, I think that's exactly what that is. Yeah. And, and again, you can reroute lines and you'll gain a couple of inches of extra oh, yeah. space there just yeah. by rerouting or unclipping something, moving it higher, and then re zip tying it or something. Yep. So, my bars are 14. I didn't have to do anything. Right. Yeah. I probably could have gone even higher than that. I had enough, sli- enough slack in the lines. Yeah. Now, for me, I always put that little wire extension on there, and it's a cheap enough yeah. extra piece, and it gives me that peace of mind. But I've also changed enough. That's bars. for the electronic wires. Though. Yes, that's not your clutch, clutch line. No, no. Break and line. I don't, I don't want to mess with that because I all my bikes have ABS, 
And as soon as I break that seal and take, take that off, in. I have yep. to take it in and get the computer to reset everything and yeah. do the, the, was it the flushing of the break or whatever? Yep. That's, that's too much of a hassle for me. So I limit it based on that. That's what I get to do in a couple months. Yeah. I got to change everything. <laughs> I got to so, change fucking everything. So with bars, I mean, it, it's like the damn tire thing. Yeah. Or the oil, all yeah. these do your research, contact the manufacturer, read your owner's manual. And, and there you go. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know uh, hardly. I've, I've met several Harley techs since I started riding. If you go and ask them, be like, hey, you know, I have this bike. You know, what's it going to take for 14-inch bars or 16-inch bars? And most of the time, they can tell you. Right off the top of their head. You're yeah. going to need an extension kit. Yeah. And that will depend on what size bars you're going yeah. with. The best way to do it, like what Justin was saying, take your bars off, put the bars you want to uh, to go with, put them on the bike, and take a string and route the string from your brake, if you have ABS, down to the ABS block. Yep. And then from your clutch, from the um, the grippy thing, fuck, the, the clutch lever. lever. The lever. Yeah, good job, man. Yeah, from the clutch lever, route it all the way down to your transmission. Or and if you have a cable clutch, you just do yep. it to the connector, which on the new bikes is fucking dope. Uh-huh. You guys should see it. It's completely redesigned for 2018. Nice. Okay. Is it still? Yeah, I guess it's still newer bikes. But yeah, you undo like the little, the like the clutch adjustment. Mm-hmm. It's all just fucking interlocked. It's like twisting and it's off. It's oh, wow. so fucking cool. That's I'm surprised they didn't like high. I mean, it's not really a highlight for your regular user, but for anyone that's, you know, going to be maintaining that or changing that, it's a fucking game changer. It's so cool. Yeah, you would hope it would lower the cost of an extension for that. Oh, for sure, yeah, because oh, yeah. you're only replacing it to right there on the uh, right there at the top of the frame. Yeah, you don't have to go all the way into, you know, the clutch basket and all that bullshit. Yeah, and so it's and that's where all that extra labor is. If you're getting like a plus six over kit, they're gonna have to go open up the transmission side cover, yep. go in there and re reconnect the new line. So it's, they'll have to drain the brake lines. Oh yeah. You know, all that stuff. Yeah, so it's it's a hassle, and they're charging you for that. But 20 inches? Yeah, 20. 20? 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said 20. You didn't actually specify inches. Well, I meant inches. He, he no. said inches. Yeah. He, he didn't put on the impl- notes. It was implied. Yeah. You know, I was just, hoping he would notes. just say 20. <laughs> 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 all right, so Sturgis. Oh, why? Yeah, that should be a big topic right now. Or why not? Sturgis is happening, right? Right now, as we're recording this, it's happening. Oh, yeah. Okay. It'll be over by the time we release it, but yeah, this gets released Wednesday. It'll just be ending. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there will still be people hung over from Sturgis. Yes, when this is, yeah. still yeah. people be in jail for sure. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, and there'll be newly pregnant women. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I want to go to Sturgis once during the rally to cross it off my bucket list, but I really just want to ride up in that area. Yeah. I. I, I, I've seen a bunch of videos, a bunch of pictures, just a beautiful area up there. And that's, that's it. I hate crowds and I'm a risk management guy. I don't want to put my bike in a situation that it's highly likely for someone to mess with it, steal it, or take something off of it. It doesn't matter how well you lock it down. It, you still run that risk. Yep. And that's, that's one of my pushbacks against most rallies is the size of the crowd and if it's a massive rally like rot sturgis daytona you're going to run that risk of getting your bike jacked i mean we had a friend of ours lose their bike oh yeah yep so uh, that and the other side of it sturgis and all the major rallies all the drunk fucktards out there that don't know what they're doing and they ride or trailer to these events and that's the only riding they do oh yeah i i just i don't want to put myself in that situation i think the best time for me to go to sturgis would be like the week after or the week before a lot of people go the week before wow. just fucking step all over mine that's cool yeah i guess i deserve that <laughs> <laughs> welcome to revenge <laughs> <laughs> yep yep it's hot yeah mm-hmm. all right well let's hear you justin <laughs> I pretty much have the same exact view. Uh, it's definitely a bucket list item. Did I misspell bucket list? Yes, you did. Bucket. How do I misspell it? Oh, well. It's two words. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's just too much shit going on. Um, 
my parents went the week before the 75th anniversary uh, and they said it was perfect. They said most of the vendors were there. It's still a, a decent crowd, so you still feel like you're at an event. Uh, but I've also heard of people um, staying or coming in that Saturday that it's ending. That way they get a little taste of, you know, the big parties and things like that. And then the cool part about that is all the vendors want to get rid of as much shit as they can. So you're usually finding some pretty good deals on some products. Makes sense. And then you can stay the week after and enjoy the the area. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm i kind of torn because I've seen the riding up in that area and it looks awesome. It looks super scenic. But I've also seen those videos where they are going through the national parks and they get caught in a herd of buffalo. And that looks fucking terrifying. <laughs> well, sorry, bison. Uh, but yeah, that looks scary as shit. You know how I feel about big animals. Yeah. yeah. So have so have either one of y'all like ever been up there? Yeah. Never. So I've driven through there in a car, mm-hmm. and it's gorgeous. Yeah, I've never mm-hmm. been anywhere in that area. I mean, I'm wondering if we just go to Jackson Hole and whoa, then whoa, whoa, just you call ride up through that area. Or I mean, even up by uh, Rushmore. Yeah, it's great. I want to see Rushmore for sure. It's it's really underwhelming. I want to see Rushmore, and I want to see the bigger one that they're making. Of Crazy the, Horse? Yeah, the Indian. Crazy Horse is pretty cool. It's all privately funded or, you know, like crowdfunded and stuff like huh. that. I did not know that. Yep. Cool. Dope. All right. But, yeah, I don't want my bike stolen. I don't want to be riding with drunk assholes. I'd like to go. I think that week after would be perfect because that Saturday night's going to be fucking crazy. You know, yeah. the last night that before. I'd like to get a taste of that. Just a little taste. I don't want to do it for a fucking week. I want that, you know, big party and then chill and then right up in the, the beautiful hills. Yeah. Was it the Black Hills? Is that yes, that Black is? Hills. Yeah. Well, African-American hills. Deadwood. And it's 2019. All those areas. It's great. It's gorgeous up there. Yeah. But again, I've seen a lot of pictures and I just, I have to try it. Maybe that, maybe we'll do that next year. Nope. No. No. Mm. <laughs> Can we just drive? Can we just no? no I'll I'm trailering. Car, I'll load in our cars and <laughs> just drive up there and just drive up there. Yeah, but he can't get any content for that. We could rent a bike. <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I don't have a closing argument for this episode what? because we were already doing a lot of these random thoughts, and I didn't want to step on another frequently asked question or any of that <sighs> bullshit. Do y'all have anything that you'd want to throw out there for the closing argument? Police sirens. Should they be allowed on bikes, and would you use one? Fuck yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. I know we've already talked about putting, like, a train horn and shit on yours. So I, I, know I keep sp- looking at those two. I know specifically how to wire up a siren onto <laughs> a bike now. I can do it fucking awesome. I made it look super clean. So 25 bucks on Amazon, you can get yourself one. Really? Is that what it? Twenty five bucks, dude. That's all I paid. I guess it might have been thirty five, but yeah, Still. it was it was under fifty for sure. Now, did yours come with like the remote that has the different? Fuck yeah, it did. Siren type, and it's a PA too, so I can get on and psh, breaker oh. breaker. <laughs> Which is funny though, because like you have to stand really far away because I have it like aimed directly into one of my lowers, so the sound kicks back feedback. and I get feedback like instantly. <laughs> okay, so let me let me run you through my thought process. So I don't know if you guys watch the mail time, but one of my subscribers sent me, uh, it's called the hype button. You press it, it does the DJ horns, mm-hmm. which I fucking loved. It was so cool. I bought one for the office and everyone loved it. But uh, that wah, 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 wah. Yeah, wah, 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 wah. And you can like, you can do multiple ones. Na, 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 na. You know, you know when we were on my bachelor party weekend and Lawrence kept fucking hitting that? It sounds exactly like that in my <laughs> office now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I thought I was like, oh shit, I could be super obnoxious if I could find a way to loudly display that on my bike. And that's kind of what got the, the gears rolling. And then I was like, okay, cool. I can buy this and rerun the wires. I'm like, oh, this sounds like a shit ton of work. But then I started thinking of like, you know, having the louder horn and things like that. And then I saw the PA system. I was like, oh, shit, that'd be fun. and be like, a, you know, talk shit to my friends. But then I started thinking, you know, logically. And for the uh, the Texas Roundup that we're doing in October, I was like, I'm going to have to be giving safety speeches to probably over 100 people by the time we get to the end of it. Oh, my God. Just stop reminding me. So <laughs> having a way to, you know, speak to a crowd actually might be beneficial. And that's when I was like, you know what? I can... Let me tr- just buy this and see how it works. It ended up being like three times the size I thought it was. Cause it, all the all the measurements were in centimeters. <laughs> so I was like, I was, damn I was like, metric system. Like, yeah, that, that, that's about 30 centimeters. <laughs> six, <laughs> inches, six inches, y'all. Six yeah. inches, yeah. I was like, yeah, even if it had been in inches, I probably would have been fucked anyways. But, <laughs> but yeah, so I 
took the time to mount it up and now I have a PA system on my bike with like six different siren noises and Do you have a so it comes with a, the PA mic. Yes. Do you have an, an optional line in? I do not have an optional line in. The only way I'd be able to and see that's the thing too is I couldn't figure out when I was I, I broke open everything to see like what I could do with it. And I don't know if the chip is in the mic or if it uses the chip that's in the siren, like what stores what. So I don't have no fucking clue. You, usually yeah. they're in the mic. Standard. Usually everything is in the, the entire control unit is going to be from the mic. Yeah. It has a, it has a chip inside the speaker though. So hmm. just I don't gonna, know. Yeah. I was just thinking like a MIDI board. <laughs> yeah. That would, that would work. <laughs> God damn. You see like a, fucking, dun, dun, a nine dun. by nine. But yeah, it's called the Patrol what, what or about, Partol. Yeah, twenty five eighty nine. Remember the? Yeah. Uh, That's all it was. Yeah, the kit that you could put on a golf cart, and it had like twelve different set sirens. You oh can yeah, hit. and you know all the different horns. Yeah, yeah. The, oh. This is very very similar. I mean, it's got horn siren, high Dixie? low. It does not have Dixie. <laughs> it has. Uh, yeah, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven the option to speak. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's funny too because like the wire to the microphone is like seventeen feet long, and then the the power wires were like that big. <laughs> what <the fuck? laughs> so, whatever. I I like the idea because for some reason people don't pay attention to horns. No, no, they're so desensitized to it. Yeah, yeah. but everyone hates hearing that whoop whoop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, and it. It'll move people out of your way. For sure. i definitely make them look. Put their shit down and fucking look. Yeah. yeah. You can also so. just hit the sirens a little. Pew, pew. <laughs> whoop. Man, I wish it had that. Like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're all in agreement that having a emergency vehicle-like <laughs> siren on your motorcycle is a good thing. Yep. Check your local ordinances. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or put it on your bike and then check and your just, local ordinances like I did. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, Texas, it's legal. It, it's, it's, well, it's a great it's, area. It's but not illegal. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah well, right. <laughs> anywhere specifically across illegal. the country. So this goes to all 50 states. It is only illegal if you get caught. So, Oh, sure. yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's globally go. recognized, actually. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that because, like, I don't know, in some of those Middle Eastern countries, they could just come over and be like, I don't like the way you look. Chop your head off. That's really racist. You've never been to a Middle Eastern country, son. Fuck no, I haven't, dude. <laughs> they are a blast. Hell no. <laughs> they can be a lot of fun. Bro, yeah. I went to Jamaica. That was as fucking outside the country as I'm ever going to get. Fuck all that noise. Do you know, the, uh, I've read online that they have a motorcycle size restriction, so they don't even sell Harleys there. No, it's, it's illegal to even import them, I think. That's why I was I was looking at the the one in the dealership or sorry the dealership it's a fucking boutique it's literally like probably twice the size of this office that's the the size of the entire store it's so small and they had a little uh, soft tail in the corner and I went over and looked and the the vins didn't match so which apparently is a thing but I didn't I didn't know Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I've been